Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Harry Lee. I'm a PhD candidate in the uh, Respiratory uh, Evaluation Sciences Program at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver, Canada, and under the supervision of Dr. Mohsen Safavi. And today on Canada Day, I'm, I'm happy to discuss um, uh, Julia, a, a programming language that has been around for just a decade now. And then why I chose Julia to, for my micro simulation modeling of asthma for my PhD thesis. And then some of the challenges and rewards that I faced and then learned from using Julia. So without further ado, here we go. So I, so everybody loves R, I love R, I've been a long R user. Um, but as in the previous presentation, we saw that the uh, R might not be the best language for a computationally intensive problems such as micro simulation modeling. So what happens often is that you have to convert the core part of your code into in, write it in C++, right? And then, and then integrate back into R or R functions through the RCPP package. And for many R programmers such as myself who do not have a like, strong uh, background in computer you know, programming, uh, you know, using these uh, low level language such as C and Fortran might be you know, challenging and time consuming and might be difficult. So I'm wondering whether there's an alternative of uh, programming language that is high level like R, but can provide high performance like C++. And I think Julia might be the savior here. So let me discuss about Julia. So here's the Julia hype train. So Julia first appeared in uh, 2012. It's an open source, higher level dynamic programming language that does not depend or demand the sacrifice of human convenience for, for without uh, losing a lot of performance. And it is, I think it is specifically designed for the scientific computing and it's developed at MIT. And one of the core authors or the core developers of Julia says that, well, while you can use it for other applications such as you know, desktop application, OS or web programming, it is really uh, designed for the technical scientific computing. And in particular, I think uh, its popularity has increased in the last two to three years among the uh, applied mathematicians, among machine learning scientists and the computational statisticians. And if you're looking for the de uh, common denominator between these uh, users is that uh, it's they, they use a lot of uh, intensive numerical computation and involve a lot of iterations. And I think these apply to micro simulation modeling as well. So in this talk, I'll describe three things about Julia and make comparison between R, Julia and C++. And the first, so I'll go into each, uh, top, uh, each topic in depth in the following slides. So the first thing we are going to look at is the, uh, that Julia is a compiled language like C++, unlike R, which is an interpreted language. And second, Julia is dynamically typed like R, whereas C++ is statistically typed. And lastly, uh, Julia employs something called uh, multiple dispatch and uses extensively. And it's similar to function overloading in C++, but there's a subtle difference. And so the, also the multiple dispatches feature is also already available in R through the S for class and C++ in the uh, YOM package. So the first one, so, so I'll talk about compilation now. So compilation means that the code is converted into the machine code so that your computer can, uh, which is the language that the, your computer uses. So C++, so ahead of time, compilers, as the name implies, compile the code before the program runs, runs it. And C++ falls into that one, this category. And what it does is it compiles and uh, creates this executable uh, that you can use it for uh, running your code efficiently. And just in time compilers, on the other hand, compile the code on the fly when the comp uh, program runs it and sort of creates this executable in memory. So when, when so first time you run it, it's gonna be very slow because it needs to comply. 
compile, but the second time you run it, it's going to be fast. But then the difference between JIT and AOT compilers is that if you close the program for the JIT compiler and then reopen it again, and the first time you run it, it has to compile again because uh, it's just stored temporarily in memory. And lastly, for interpreter language such as R, the code needs to be translated each time you run it. So it's very, very slow. And for micro simulation in which there's a lot of iterations, uh, compilation is a must. And here's an example. I hope my code is written following good practices uh, uh, that demonstrates this uh, uh, JIT compiler compilation. So I just sample a bunch of uh, values from the uniform distribution here, X. And then I just written a simple function uh, that computes the mean. And here you can see I didn't type, I didn't declare type like in C++, right? So it's like R code. And I just, and then I measured the time. So first time run it, it's very, very slow compared to the second time I run it. And the first time you run it, you can see that there's a memory allocation that is the uh, creating an executable in memory. All right. So the first time you run it, it's very slow, but sec starting the second time, it's going to be very, very fast. Okay. The second feature I'm going to talk about is the dynamic versus static uh, languages. So in static language, like C++, every expression, which is a combination of values, of variables, operator, and function calls, needs to have a type defined before you, can, before you run it. On the other hand, in a dynamic language, you do not have to specify type, like, I, I, like you saw in the last uh, code, coding example. The type is sort of determined as the program executes. So Julia is dynamically typed, and then Julia's compiler performs this type inference where, in where not every expression needs to have an inferable type. So the type can be kind of generic. And what the compiler does is that it analyzes code and predicts what the types of ex expressions might be and the produces efficient code. But if you do annotate the type, so if you do annotate the expressions with types, then it could improve the compiler to generate a better, more efficient machine code. So here's an example here. So this is just an example how you use a type declaration in Julia. So the two columns are used to, is used to declare type. So here, the first one I have, so I have an expression, one plus one, it's a very simple expression. And then I say, oh, so it has a type integer. And then it runs. Second time, so, so for the second one, I didn't declare any type. And then it says it's a 2.0, which is a float, type float. And then for the last one, I say, oh, this expression must be a, a type of integer. And then I get an error here, type error, where it's expected integer, but the value that I, the, this expression execute is a float, okay? This is a very simple example. A more interesting example is here. So it's the same example about computing the mean, but this time I type the input. So I say the input now has to be a vector of float. So what you can see is that once I uh, annotate the type, the performance is same as, as if you just run it second time, right? So first time you run it, it took 0 0.022, but then when you, once, once, you, once it's annotated, this performance is similar to the second time you run it. Alrighty. And lastly, I'll talk about multiple dispatch. So multiple dispatch simply means that the uh, function can have many, many methods depending on the input types. And it's similar to function overlo overloading in C++, but there's a subtle difference. So the overloading is based on the static type of the input so that the method is chosen at compile time, right? On the other hand, multiple dispatch is based on the di dynamic type, meaning that the method is chosen at runtime. And it's, it's, this can be useful because the actual input type you have might be different in runtime. Uh, so without further ado, maybe I'll, give you, maybe I'll give a simple example. So suppose you want to write a generic function that computes the quantile of a distribution. 
So in R, without using the multiple multiple dispatch functionality, you would have to write many 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 uh, if else statements to account for different new distributions like QNIF, uh, QBinom, QNorm, QPOS, and so on. But in Julia, you can just use the one function name called Quantile. So here's the example. So Julia, so there's a Quantile function, and I have a bunch of uh, I have a vector of these distributions as well as just vector of values. And now I just want to compute the 50% quantile. And even though these are different distributions, it computes, it, I can use the same function for all of these, which, is, which saves a lot of coding and uh, it's, it's, it's much more simpler. And then what you can see is that quantile actually has 66 methods, just one this function. And Another example following our toy example here. So I, comp I create two functions for the same, uh, two methods for the same function compute mean multiple. So here, first one takes the input vector of float. The second one takes the vector of strings. And then when I look at the, I can see the methods that this function has. It has two methods as expected, one for the vector of string and vector of uh, uh, num numeric values. Alrighty. So what's bad about Julia? Well, not many people use it and then Julia is still in fancy. So there are many, many packages that you are missing right now and which you might need for your micro simulation modeling. And then in annual Julia conferences, those uh, Julia core Julia developers talk about the bad things about Julia and the, those talks are titled what's bad about Julia. So they're being very honest and then they talk about how they're going to address them. And maybe the most important issue might be that integrating Julia into our package uh, might, might be a little difficult. And, and that's been my experience. So why is, that, why, is the, why is that the case? Well, first of all, I want to say there are R packages that can provide an interface to uh, Julia in R. So you could use those packages to wrap a Julia package into an R package. But one feature of the Julia is that there's, it's a just-in-time compiler. So the first time you run it, every time someone starts a new R studio and then say, oh, library, this Julia, uh, this R package that contains Julia, then there might be a, a very high startup time. And that's not something that R users are uh, accustomed to. So you'd have to somehow create the executable like C++ so that you know, they only so they will compile it when they install it and then don't have to compile it ever again. And this may also help the users by, so that they don't have to have Julia installed on their machines. Uh, and then for, to do that, there's actually a solution uh, using the call package called the package compiler in Julia, but this requires a uh, knowledge of C, which was one of my main motivations for uh, avoiding C++ and choosing Julia. So I'm, yeah. So here's my summary of journey of Jul using Julia for the micro simulation of the whole, mo a whole disease modeling of asthma. I think Julia is efficient. So you can write code like as if you're writing R code, but then it's very fast. And I think it's a lot more readable and accessible than C++. Uh, I think many people would, uh, have, do not, would have not difficult time reading this Julia code if they're, if they're good uh, experienced R users. And the other good thing about Julia is that many, many, all the, many of the packages and the core packages are written in Julia. So if you know Julia, then it's really easy to go modify other people's functions, understand other people's function as well, uh, which is not the case in R because you see, if you want to understand some package in R that might be written in Fortran and C++, you no. Know, which uh, prevents you from like modifying it easily. Uh, but like I said, the package system is not as rich as R. So on the bright side, I think it gives you a great opportunity for learning. So to uh, implement everything scratch from scratch in Julia and then contributing to the ecosystem. And actually achieving high performance can be a little challenging as it requires a very good understanding of Julia. Uh, and then, so there are many, many 
there are not many R or Julia users in the in our, in our community. So I have reached out to the forums and so on, and then asked for feedback. And then one of the reviewer kindly reviewed my uh, very long Julia code in depth because he was just bored. <laughs> so I'm very, I was very grateful to him. Uh, so in summary, uh, Julia is a high level dynamic programming language that provides uh, that can provide high performance and might be a good alternative to uh, C, C++ or Fortran, these are low level languages. Uh, if you want to explore more, uh, there are two great packages in Julia for micro simulation modeling, SimJulia, which is equivalent to the Simmer package in R and then agents for the agent based modeling. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for a really interesting presentation. Um, I hope in 10 years time, when you're running the Julia for HTA conference, you're not making fun of us too much for still using R. Um, <laughs> well, well, one question though about Julia, so it's, it's very fast, it's excellent for micro simulation, but an advantage of R is all the statistical analysis tools. So if you're doing health economics, you can analyze the individual patient data, the, the published data and do all your analysis and then do the modeling all in the same language. How is Julia at statistical analysis? So I think there are many packages missing in terms of like, in terms of statistics. Uh, so I have masters in statistics and I know many, many like great R packages, uh, but there's simply many missing right now in Julia. Uh, so if you, so for my uh, micro simulation modeling, I do not have to rely much on these packages like R statistical packages. So that was uh, one of the motivations that I chose Julia. Um, yeah, so the ecosystem is lacking, and then I hope more people join and then write, uh, you know, Julia packages. So at the moment, I I might I would say it may might might not be the best alternative at the moment to use Julia for micro simulation modeling. Yeah. Are there any other questions from the audience? Uh, I have one, if it is okay. That's okay. This is Mohsen. Uh, thanks, Harry. Uh, yeah. The thing that is not clear in my mind still is like I use, say, GLMNet package these days. I know yeah. the core part of it was written in Fortran, yeah. but it's it, it installs just like any other R package in my system. I don't need to know a little, even a single bit of Fortran because it's everything happens in the background. Yeah. So if, if you are using Julia as a package developer, what are you imposing on the end user? Do they have to have like a Julia running environment and their system? Do they have to know Julia? Can you write a seamless R package that does the Julia in the background without, without bothering the end user? Yeah, so yeah, you can. So like I said, uh, you can do that, uh, but it's a little bit complicated. Yeah, that's actually doable. But then one thing that I didn't go in detail is that when Julia compiles your code, uh, it sort of customizes to your operating system. Uh, so, you might lose a little bit of efficiency, but users do not have to have installed, have in Julia installed. So you can pre-compile everything using this uh, package compiler in Julia and just, yeah, do not impose any constraint on the users. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, so we're just about out of time.